I know it's been a moment, but I've been super, super busy. And over this next week or two, I'm sure you've either seen or you will see what's been going on for me here at the HQ. So before we go any further, guys, and we get into the yellow gene, I want you guys to do me a favor. Could you smash that like button? Could you also subscribe if you haven't already? And also make sure you hit that notification bell. All this sort of stuff absolutely means the world to me and it enables me to see what you guys are enjoying. Also, if you wouldn't mind leaving me a comment as we go through the video or even at the end so I know exactly what part of this video that interests you about the yellow gene. Let me tell you a bit of background about the yellow gene. So the yellow gene came to me with a shipment of animals which was imported from Ghana from Africa so it was a captive farmed animal okay it came in along with well I actually picked up that I picked out of the bunch should I say that female along with two other dark females. What's crazy is this female was extremely light and I was looking for some dark genes. Back in the day when I found these, the GHI was really a massive influence and dark genes was such a massive influence within the ball python hobby slash industry that I was kind of looking for some dark genes. But this female stood out for me because she was very light in color. She has interesting yellows and I just labeled her as the yellow gene. Year one of breeding her, I've, I wanted to make sure that well, I wanted to see if she was a lelic or if she had a reaction with any of the bell complex. So what's perfect to breed to her was a Mojave. So I bred my Cos Mojave to this female. Out of the clutch, I only hit one Mojave, which looked completely different to the other Mojaves in the clutch. The, all the normals were just straight wild normals. But this one Mojave had real kind of a yellow look to him and he was a male so that was fantastic and what I did I held him back and as he grew the yellow on the sides like I'll show you a moment with mom sort of got very fluorescent in color so year two as in the second year of a breeding the sun was up to size and I was able to breed the sun back to the mom now out of nine eggs on the second clutch I only got normals and Mojaves I got no yellows, no Mojave yellows, no yellows in general. And at this point, I thought nine eggs, not a single baby that looked like mom or even looked like dad. So I just kind of put that project to bed and I thought, you know what, there's other stuff that's going on that I need to concentrate on. So I decided to stop pursuing the yellow project. So fast forward to this breeding season just gone. I decided I was going to use the female yellow, the original female, because she was absolutely smashing food and she was a fantastic looking animal. I thought, I was, you know what, I'm going to breed her one last time and I'm just going to make some heck clown combos and I bred her to a pastel bongo clown again just because I just thought there was nothing going on with the yellow I thought it was just one of those flukes and it wasn't polymorphism it was just kind of a polygenic trait that just wasn't anything there so I bred the bongo the pastel bongo clown to her just to make a female bongo heck clown that I could hold back for the clown projects then I decided to sell the female I sort of have a rearrange of the collection as you do and I thought you know what I'm going to sell her and let someone else work with the project if it continues to prove out or if anything else pops out or they the people could just use it or whoever brought it could just use it as kind of a very nice looking normal you know if they were first getting into their breeding season one of my patreon members mags morphs they happily purchased her off me this point her third clutch was in the incubator still cooking so me being me i was kind of convinced nothing was going to come of it and i wasn't going to hatch any yellows it was just one of those things but guess what obviously out of that clutch came some some yellows not only yellows 
I believed I hit, or I have hit, two yellows. I've hit a pastel bongo yellow and a bongo yellow on its own. However, I'm not gonna show off the bongo combos because I'm not 100% certain because what needs to happen is these animals need to grow up and we need to see if the color, the fluorescent color, the yellow of the, the original mom comes out in those said babies. But what I can tell you is the baby that you will see in this video is 100% a yellow. And that's what's exciting about it. It looked exactly like mom when it came in from Africa. And again, all the same exquisite sort of traits that mom has, this baby does. And I'll also show you a standard wild type as well next to the yellow so you guys can get an idea. So for now, I'm gonna shut up. I'm gonna let you guys get into this video and see what I find to be very interesting with this hobby, that sometimes we shouldn't always give up so soon on projects. Let's get into the video. So here we have the original yellow. So this female here, she came from the wild as a hatchling. Uh, I got her with a group of other hatchlings which were also captive farmed from Africa. Now, this particular shipment came from Ghana. Now, with this female, she was very light in color and I'll show you in a moment regarding how the, how the babies have come out or how the hatchlings look. What we look for, what I was sort of blown away with this female is she's got these sort of highlighted yellows flames coming up and especially round by the neck it's almost like it's fluorescent in, in some in instances and especially when she's going through a hormonal change so again we get this sort of uh, like a fluorescent yellow highlights down the side and it's also on the belly as well and again if I show you down the side the the yellow female tends to have that sort of fluorescent looking color so this is the yellow female the original mom and again she was very light as a hatchling um, very peculiar looking to say the least so for me what was very interesting was how light she was and obviously um, I was just really excited for the project to see exactly where we could go and move forward with her so obviously I'll show you now the hatchlings that came out and we can take a look in a bit more closer detail at the hatchlings and see how the they transform from a hatchling obviously into this adult female here so here we have the yellow gene as a hatchling. So obviously I've hatched this guy uh, and he is a male, he is heck clown. But what I wanna show you with the yellow gene is obviously first of all this kind of a yellow appearance. And guys, I've just named it the yellow just to keep it you know, very simple so I could track it within the collection. Um, this blush in here, which is now a, a white yellow. And when it was born, it was virtually white, but I know it's gonna get even more yellow um, as it grows uh, again down the side there and again round here. So that was the most important part with the yellow gene, apart from its overall yellow appearance. Um, like I said, I bred it to a Mojave the first year to see if it was a Lelic with or, or a, a part of the bell complex. And I got a yellow Mojave when I bred him back the second year. All I got was normals and Mojaves. I got no yellows, no supers, no nothing. So I just put the project to bed. I just thought, you know what? It was just a fluke. You know, it was just, a, a pretty Mojave, even though it had the same characteristics as Mom, with the yellow flanks coming up the side, it never quite, I, I never produced anything from it, so I just sold it as a, as a normal Mojave uh, to one of my customers that needed a Mojave to make some blue-eyed leucistics. Obviously, as we fast forward with this clutch, I bred the pastel bongo clown, because I wanted some bongo heck clowns, females, just to hold back. And as you can see, we popped out two yellows very easy to distinguish between a normal and a yellow it, it is night and day certainly when i'll get the a normal out and i'll i'll show you so the bellies again very clean very bright so this this little boy here is obviously 100 percent heck clown within the clutch as well i hit a bongo yellow and a 
I believe a pastel bongo yellow, but we'll see as they grow in age. Um, but this is 100% a yellow, and what I'm really excited about this, I hit a male and a female in this clutch. The male will probably go and stop with Mags Morphs, being as they have now brought the original female, and they'll be able to grow this one up, show it off, and uh, we'll, we'll do a bit of a breeding project together and uh, see if we can hit some supers. So there is the single gene yellow. I'll go and grab a normal now so we can put it next to it. So here we have a normal heck clown. So just to get away, if people are thinking that it's the heck clown which is causing the influence on the yellow, it's not. This is just a normal heck clown from a completely different clutch. And as you can see, it's nothing like the yellow regarding its pattern, regarding how it looks. This is what I would class as a typical wild type, but you can certainly see that the yellow is completely different in how it appears. We've got this sort of yellow overall look to it, like a yellow haze, and we've got this sort of white outline coming up the sides. And again, very distinctive alien heads, but yeah, you can definitely see the difference when they're together, the difference between a normal heck clown and a yellow heck clown. So there we have it guys. That was the yellow gene in this little video. Now, what is interesting, like I said, you know, I will be loaning the uh, hatchling male, which is obviously Het Clown. I will be loaning that over to Mags Morphs and them, they're gonna sort of watch it grow up and we're gonna breed them back together and see what we get. Obviously, I'm gonna keep you guys posted as well along for the ride and keep you guys up to date with everything. I'm gonna hold back. There was also a female yellow heck clown I'm gonna hold her back as well and I'm also holding back the bongo which I believe is a bongo yellow heck clown female as well so we'll be able to see that grow up I am letting go of the two pastel bongos one's already taken for and I will be letting go of the other one what's exciting about this sort of stuff guys is you never know what's gonna happen and the one thing I've learned over the kind of learnt over the years is a lot of it comes down to patience okay patience 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 We've seen what happened with the sunset when Brian Barcheck had the sunset and he just thought it was a, an incomplete dominant or a, a dominant gene and that it actually wasn't a recessive. And he sort of just put that project and he just blew it out of the water. He was like, no, it's not anything. It's just one of those anomalies. Well, this is kind of what I thought with this female. I just thought she was an anomaly, something that was, wasn't polymorphism or isn't polymorphism, it was just more polygenic, and that it just wasn't gonna reproduce the way I was kind of hoping it would do. However, I'm wrong. Uh, the next step would be to try and hit a super, if there is a super. So that's gonna be the next journey. Now, sometimes trying to hit a super, sometimes you can hit it within the first clutch, but it can take up to 10 years, or almost 10 years, like it did with the Super Orange Dream. So we've really gotta have some patience with these projects. But at the same time, we've also gotta look at our projects Projects and know which one we want to work with or which ones we want to drop you know which one desires more of our attention than the other so we have to be very selective with what we work with but anyway guys I hope you enjoyed this video I hope it gave you something to look at and something to enjoy something different um, I'm I am genuinely excited for the yellow project I do hope that there is a super because I do feel the super will be very extravagant in color um, and the, the colors will pop and obviously that yellow will obviously pop even more more so i'm kind of hoping there's a super but you'll never know anyway guys just want to give a final shout out to all the patreon members and everyone on the discord it's absolutely amazing we've currently got some amazing people on the patreon and the discord so i want to thank you all for that community it is absolutely epic so thank you a lot but for now guys i'm going to leave you to it thanks for tuning in hope you're all well hope you've had a fantastic breeding season and i'm it's sort of nice as well that the world's kind of getting back to normal but anyway thanks for tuning in Thanks for all your support. Love and respect you all. Take care. I'll see you guys on the next one.